Six people shot and one of them killed in Daytona Beach. Another man was killed in the middle of an Orlando road. This gun violence happened last week in less than 72 hours and all of the victims were black men. Investigative reporter Darlene Jones was researching a story about gun violence against Central Florida kids and Darlene, you found it's impacted black men at an alarming rate. Martha, this is a national problem no less, but more disturbing here because blacks make up less of the overall population. The mother you're about to hear from lost her son to a killer who's still on the streets despite there being an arrest at one point in the case. Mercy Drive is where 20-year-old Milkevious Lake grew up in Windsor Cove. It has a history of gun violence, which is why Sonia May moved her boys out. Milkevious, though, got mixed up in the wrong crowd and was killed in a parking lot in 2014. I can name so many friends that I lost growing up on Mercy Drive. It almost becomes um, normal. Nine investigates went back to 2014 to track gun injuries and deaths in Central Florida using hospital records and medical examiner reports. More than 6,000 in the five years since then. A majority, 86 to 91 percent, are black males, though all blacks make up only a segment of the total population. When we see uh, black lives that are taken in the streets every single day by gun violence, there is no collective political response. But then when something happens, a mass shooting in Parkland that impacted mostly white, mostly affluent students, then suddenly politicians were scrambling to slap legislation together. State Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith tried last year but failed to push gun reform. The Republican-controlled legislature did pass a measure allowing teachers to be armed because of that school shooting in Parkland. So some would say that the black community minorities are being ignored. We have some changes in the culture that we've wound up with so many more uh, broken families and broken lives. It's the whole stability structure of, of the family and the community that has put things more at risk. But, but, but by banning firearms, you're taking the law-abiding people of the black community and making them helpless to the gangs. Just last month, prosecutors dropped the charges against the individual charged in Lake's murder. My son wasn't perfect, and I said it in my interview in 2017, but no one deserves to be murdered. You got that right. I had to dig through court records to obtain a copy of this. This is something we don't always see. It's the prosecutor's notes on this case. He explains that this case was being prosecuted because of an informant who was in jail with the suspect at the time he was arrested. He claimed to have information. The prosecutor said that information was never vetted and therefore the suspect should have never even been charged. Representative Guillermo Smith is hoping his idea of a task force will gain some traction during the next legislative session.